on every world, wherever people are, in the deepest part of winter, at the exact midpoint, everyone stops and turns and hugs, as if to say, well done, well done everyone, we're halfway out of the dark. Hey and welcome to this very Merry Christmas Hanukkah Kwanzaa halfway out of the dark edition of Making FX. Getting snow or any particles to land on objects or people using After Effects is kinda tricky. I've already made one tutorial where I land dust on an invisible man, but to achieve that I had to reverse the comp. This method plays forwards, which means that you can move around and change the object the snow is landing on. Longtime After Effects legend Maltanon explained this technique way back in 2007. With AE being three decades old now, there's a risk of lost knowledge. Probably due to social media algorithms always promoting the new, but also because software updates means that sometimes old tutorials are no longer easy to follow. Fortunately, I'm old enough where I learn from the pros like Maltanon, but young enough to still be exploring After Effects. I've added some of my own tricks to the original, but feel free to check that out too, linked in the description. And Mrs. Cactus was kind enough to create the background image. I've set it up in an HD comp. And I'm going to start with the text, so I'll select the text tool and I'll draw a text box and write my holiday greeting. And now I'm going to right click on the text layer and choose Precompose. And rename it and move all attributes. I'm going to be using the text layer in a couple of places and I don't have to update the text separately. Now that I've got that sorted, from the project panel, I'm going to duplicate the main comp by selecting it and going to Edit Duplicate. And after opening, I'll go to Composition, Composition Settings, and rename this to Landscape. And then I'll right click on the background image and choose Guide Layer. This will let me see it, but After Effects will ignore it. I'll just demonstrate that by dragging the landscape comp into my main comp. And if I turn off that comp's background layer, there, it's only showing the text. We're going to use the landscape comp to control where the snow lands. So back in the landscape comp, and the first thing we're going to do is create a shape layer for the ground. So make sure nothing is selected, then choose the pen tool and draw a shape. You can see I'm setting mine to cover the whole bottom of the screen. Expand the shape layer. Delete the stroke and set the fill to white. But let's also add something so that the snow lands on the tree. It doesn't have to be perfect, we're going to add a lot of blurring to this. Once you've drawn it, go to the tiny add menu and select gradient fill. The two gradient points are right in the center of the comp, so once you've found those, Drag them onto the tree and line them up like this. This is going to be seen by the particles almost like a 3D object, and we'll get them settling in different parts of the tree. Now, two last things for this comp. First, with the shape layer selected, go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur, and set the blur radius to 40. Then select our text pre-comp layer and go to Effect, Generate, Fill and set this colour to white too. So that looks really ugly, but back in the main comp we're going to hide it. Then let's create a new solid by going to Layer, New, Solid. Make it comp size, and hit Enter and rename this to Particles. Now go to Effect, Simulation, Particle Playground. Particle Playground has a bad rap. I think mainly because older computers couldn't handle the number of particles it generates, and it's in 2D. And the terminology is confusing. And because, yeah, I get it, it's Christmas, I shouldn't gripe. When we first add Particle Playground, the Canon emitter is in effect, and that's good enough for us. Expand Canon, and set the barrel radius to half the width of your comp. And we don't want our snow to just pop into existence, so position the barrel to be Y minus 960. Set the particles per second to 100, the colour to white and the size to 3. I'm leaving the velocity at 130 and the direction pointing up. 
This does mean that the snow takes a little longer to appear, but the direction random means we get a neat drifting effect. And you can always bring the layer forward in time. To make the snow not look like a BBC Micro, go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fastbox Blur, and set the blur radius to 3. Okay, back to Particle Playground. Collapse Canon and expand gravity, and drop the amount to 60. This just slows down the acceleration. Now collapse gravity and expand Persistent Property Manager. Honestly, I could try to explain why it's called Persistent and why there's an Ephemeral Manager, but in short, Persistent makes a change to a particle, and Ephemeral adds a change to a particle. And Adobe, if you're going to say use it to make explosions more realistic, show don't tell. Just like if you're enjoying this video, there's a like button. That's the one right next to the subscribe button. With the Persistent Property Manager expanded, set the layer to our landscape comp. Change map red to Y speed. So any particles coming into contact with any red values will see their speed drop to zero. That's the min and max properties. Now in theory, I could have used colors in the landscape so that when the particles come into contact with blue, I could control their opacity so they fade out. In practice though, it's incredibly difficult, even with pure reds, greens, and blues, to affect two different properties like speed and opacity. So instead, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use the track mat controls for the particles layer and select my landscape comp and invert it, which is fine, but I have the snow covering the text, which I quite liked. So go into the landscape comp and select the text layer and then go to effect, expression controls, checkbox control and hit enter and rename it to show text. And then tap T to expose the text comp's opacity and use the pick whip to link to this checkbox. Then edit the expression and type times 100. Checkboxes produce a value of 0 or 1, so by checking the box, we set the opacity to 1, and multiplying that by 100 gets us a checkbox to control opacity. So now, if we go into composition, open in essential graphics, and then drag in from our timeline checkbox control, we can control the text layer from the main comp. Back in the main comp, select our text layer and expand it on the timeline until you can see the essential graphics. Make sure the checkbox is on, then holding control, tap D to duplicate it. Hit enter and rename this duplicate to a mat and uncheck the box. Then link this comp to the layer's particles track mat. And that's the trick. No, there's more to do, don't break. Too late. Okay, I'll go quick, otherwise YouTube will try to blast you with more ads. Create a new black solid. Name it Snow. And place this behind the text layer. And go to Effect, Generate, CC Snowfall. Drop the flakes to 500. And increase the size to 15. Drop the scene depth to 1000 and the speed to 100. And expand extras and set the ground level to about 40%. And maybe up the effects opacity to 100%. And then also set this to use the matte inverted track mat and set the blending mode to screen. Now, while this is all good, pointing out that the snow is landing on the text by animating this is even better. On my text layer, I had fun with the text animations presets and used those to find an animation I liked. And I use the layer style bevel and emboss to give my text some roundness. But that will really be up to you. My comp is in the description below if you get stuck. But you aren't limited to text. You can have snow landing on people or logos, anything really. By using the landscape precomp as your map for the persistent property manager, you can have all sorts of fun. One last thing. If you're watching this on December 25th, please let me wish you all the joy and good feelings this time of year should bring. And if you're watching this at any time in the future, then 
check out this playlist for more cool stuff you can do with Adobe After Effects.